All right, we're going to call the select board meeting to order. And first up is public comment. Just anything not on the agenda? Anybody there? I have. Okay, go ahead, John. Um, just two, I guess, uh, comments. One, I'm hoping that the uh, town report will have the different capital reserve funds listed like it has in the past um, and any planned um, uses of those funds. Um, I think it did two years ago. I'm pretty sure it did not have the information last year or so. Um, and then I've mentioned this before in another select board meeting, but just uh, I'm strongly urging the town to include pavement maintenance, like crack sealing as part of our regular work um, every year, because um, like I've observed some fairly new pavement, like two or three years old that already has like a crack down the middle. And basically if we don't take care of things like that, the water gets in there and we'll end up, we don't spend a little bit of money like every year on that type of work, then we end up spending a lot more money down the road. So just urging the town to do that kind of preventive maintenance with their road projects. Do we have any more public comment? No, anybody online with public comment? I'm seeing it. They're all staying muted. This is good. We want to approval of the agenda. Move to approval of the agenda. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Consent calendar, meeting minutes, listers office, no appeal or certificate and warrants. And we've got to approve the consent calendar. And I will second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. New business. First up is an update on the town police department. And so forth. Nobody has noticed we did not have Trevor with us tonight. He is positive for COVID and upset that his kids will share COVID with him, but not their Halloween cake. <laughs> 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 Sounds like Trevor. <laughs> so um, just given a status um, of where we're at and what we're up against, um, starting shortly after November, we got a lot of folks reaching out with fears of what was going to happen um, with the Orange County Sheriff's Department. Uh, we've monitored it for a while and noticed that some of the things that were being talked about were happening. So we did get a little bit more than just monitoring and started doing some looking into, met with some other departments that surround us, met with the state police. Um, bottom line, nobody could provide the service. Everybody was tapped out. Most of them are short staffed, um, state police especially. So um, there was a little bit of effort, but not a lot put into what are our other options? Can we bring our department back to life? Kind of what does that look like? Um, it didn't take long before we heard that there was not enough people still employed by the Orange County Sheriff to even do the basics that they have to do at the county level. Say nothing about meeting their contracts. And there was a lot of discussion around um, that they were going to let the contracts go, but we wouldn't know until the new sheriff was on board. So um, we did a fair amount of scrambling in a short period of time, that's safe to say, mm -hmm. um, to look at what we do and how we stand back up the police department that the town had for quite a few years. Um, I did look back in the last budget that we approved in the town was the July 18 to June of 19 budget for the entire department. <clears throat> um, and then we went to the contracted services through Orange County, which was a cost savings, obviously to that district. Um, but now we find ourselves in the boat of having to stand up some level of law enforcement to have that service available in the town. So um, we do have um, some staff that have been hired and Scott can probably fill in some of this more than me because I didn't get a chance to talk to Trevor about it. Um, but we have hired Scott on as the chief. And 
we have hired the admin person, correct? Um, at this point, but no other officers. Um, and some of what we're having, what's having to happen is to reactivate everything that got deactivated when we got rid of the town police force. So all our uh, ability to access all the different computer systems to get different information, even to be able to do things like buy the firearms, uh, do those type of functions to get it. Um, and, you know, Scott was telling me today, we can't even apply for some of these grants that will help us pay for these things oh, wow. because this number hasn't been reactivated yet. So I, there's a site visit coming up on Tuesday that will get us one step closer to that um, and uh, try to check some more boxes and then you know, hopefully get it. This is an agency or ORI number. You know, yeah. So is that a is that a state uh, certification? It's, well, it's it comes for the FBI, it comes from right? The FBI, yeah. but, but the state is one of the gatekeepers that we need to get through to then get to it. And they've all been great. They're all helping. Like this is this is pretty quick that all this is finding its way through the process. But um, we're just kind of getting over those hurdles. I think. I don't want to speak for you. If you want to tell them more, you're welcome to. But um, you know, we believe it's in the three to four week range that will be active. That That's on the very, 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 very fast track. Yeah. Um, it, a lot depends on what happens with the site visit. If there's maintenance that because we have to secure the building uh, with the newer. Uh, ramifications and things that we're being held accountable for. The old station was grandfathered in back years and years ago. Now that we're reinstating this, we have to do all that stuff. I and mean, I don't know what the extent of that is until the second visit is what we're looking at in this Tuesday at 8 30 in the morning. <laughs> what, so, what might be some examples of, of that? Just out of curiosity. Sure. Uh, like, uh, have to make sure that uh, there's no access allowed past the foyer without an escort, uh, proper signage, an uh, internal camera inside the building overlooking all uh, exit points and entrance points. Um, it makes sure like the windows are secured, uh, those kind of bits and pieces. You know, we can't have any screens that are facing windows. Um, no cameras that look at when or oh, look at screens. It's all uh, information privacy mm -hmm. stuff that's kind of going on right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, all uh, the CGS policies need to be all in a book and everybody's uh, up to speed and being able to access that information. Mm -hmm. uh, even as far as like janitorial staff coming in, making sure they're all vetted through the proper systems that they can't access the building without escort. Uh, or get uh, properly fingerprinted and vetted uh, through the CGIS programs to be able to have access to the building. It's very similar to like when we built the fire station, right? It was perfectly fine where we were, but as soon as something happens, it changes your scenario. Now you've got this new standard right. Right. that you have to meet. Um, so, is that pretty? Let me just make sure we're through with the update part of it. Uh, that's where that ORI is standing. That's our, our major hang up. Without that ORI, uh, as Trina said, we're, we can't even apply for law enforcement based grants. Um, I can't even apply for you know department issued weapons. Um, so, like the uh, Bulletproof Best Program uh, that we just tried to enter into to apply for. And do it without that ORI. <clears throat> um, without that ORI number, we're kind of dead in the water. So we got it. We're trying to push that out as fast as we can. Okay. Any questions on that? From anybody? No? Kelly? Uh, I just want to say thank you all for being on the select board and handling um, all of our town's business. Um, for all of us who feel too busy to <laughs> to run, I do, I do deeply appreciate that uh, a lot. Um, I I want to say I, I live in the police district and I I pay the, the tax bill, and I'm I'm pretty concerned about a, a seven hundred and seventy five thousand dollar police department for the police district. 
I was on the committee in 2018-19 that disbanded the, the police department. We met for months. We had mm -hmm. three public hearings about um, what our needs for policing were. And um, we learned uh, quite, quite a few things. Some of them may be relevant information to you all, which I'm hoping Larry can remember some of it. But so this budget, um, as, as I recall, there are 1,500 people living in the police district. Is that, do you know? I think it's more like 2,500. Is it 2,500 people? Is it 1,500 taxable properties? Uh, yeah, I, I'm going to ask the lister to, to, to let me know that information, but it's a very small group that has to bear this, this burden. And when we had these public hearings, um, a lot of people, there were a number of members of the committee from outside the district, which I was like, do you pay a dime for this? Why are you weighing in? But whatever, like we did have those folks here and a lot of people from outside the district came and testified. Um, for us. And it was very, very crystal clear. The one takeaway I, I remember clearly is that people outside the district don't want to pay a dime for policing. And so um, they're satisfied with relying on the state police um, for services. So the one um, item in the budget that you have is a $100,000 general fund transfer um, that, that basically shifts the cost um, to the whole town uh, for some of this budget. And I'm not sure that those, the people outside the district, I know for a fact that they don't want, I mean, that, that was the status of what we took away from that meeting, um, that they don't want to contribute to policing. They don't want that tax burden um, for, their, for, for them. Um, so that that's that's one concern I have, and then of course I'm I I don't think that the village I'm calling it the village the police district requires uh four full time police officers and an administrator. We disbanded the, the department just as the department was asking us to float a million dollar bond, asking the district voters only to float a million dollar bond for a new building when like as far as I can tell but you all know better than I do we've got like some problems with our water system and we have a lot of like seems like infrastructure projects we have to be working on so that that was like a complete concern to me it was like where are we going to get a million dollars among these I think 1500 taxable properties um, for a building um, to do this so this budget of 775 is really high out of the gate and it's only going to grow. And I expect um, that someone eventually will be looking for a building. Um, and again, it's it's a, it's it, it's a really small number of people who have to bear the costs of this. So that's that's why I, I will be voting no uh, to, to this expenditure. Um, come come town meeting day. Um, we did do a lot of work for months um, to hear from people and the, the types of things people want, the types of police services that people wanted uh, and the types of calls that our police officers were getting would be satisfied by a constable, whether it's a constable who is a law, a licensed uh, or a certified law enforcement officer like Scott. Um, towns our size, our police district size, 1500 people I think in Brookfield have two constables and they meet all those needs, which can be service of process, animal complaints, both wild animals and domestic animals. Um, constables mediate neighbor disputes, they do welfare checks. These were all the types of things that people who came in um, testified that they were worried if we didn't have a police department, those are the services that they would be missing. Um, and constables under Vermont law can also be law enforcement officers and have those, have those uh, law enforcement powers as well. So uh, if this budget re reflected two police officers, um, I'd support it, but this is way too much of a burden for, for the, for the district voters. 
and it's, it sounds like it's a done deal. <laughs> so I don't know why I'm telling you all this, but I thought you should think about that or know, know that anyway. So to help you understand a little bit about why there's more money put up on the other side, <clears throat> Orange County had a contract to provide services out there. It was $25,000 a year to provide services to the rest of the town. But we got a lot more than that. Right? So your officers that were here in town are driving through the rest of the town every day to get back to Chelsea or to come back over or to go to the courthouse or whatever. And they took different paths to cover more areas. So we got a lot more of that service. We're not getting any service from Orange County now. So 25,000 isn't even going to be enough to help us in what's going on out in the rural part of our town. I can tell you there's at least two big drug houses outside of the town on the other side of the interstate. There's one outside of town here in the village that's just south of the line that require a lot of police service. Our school requires a lot of police service. Our hospital requires a lot of police service. This town's service demand is much more than just navigating neighbor complaints and those type of things. And there's other ways you can resolve them. You're completely right. You don't need a SWAT team in there to deal with those things. But the level of calls and the type of things we're seeing in this community right now, going without law service is not an option. And, and I, I do appreciate that, but it's unfair, it's patently unfair to, to require the people living in the paying taxes in the police district to provide police services to this extent to a school that three towns use. Mm -hmm. yeah, that, we're meeting with them. Yeah. Yeah. So I, what I you see there in the really budget, really has, really. yeah, it has some money in there allocated to the other users, but we don't have any way of knowing that. Like, yeah. Literally, this thing has been a whirlwind to put together. And I appreciate that. And so your numbers are probably a little high because we got a, we have no idea on some of this stuff. What we did was went back to the old budget. If you look at the last budget we approved for an entire police service, the the to be raised by taxes was 516,000. Yep. We're proposing, I think, 499. Mm -hmm. um, so what we we have meetings coming up with the school. We have meetings coming up with Gifford and Clara Martin Center. Yep. Those are some of our power users, if you want to call them that. Yep, I understand. Um, and so there's a conversation that's already been started. We've had outreach with them. We've started that kind of, you know, is it's not fair that we're paying. And so they're kind of receptive, kind of, you know. Yeah. It's like, oh, our budget and we're already in trouble. And May I say one Sorry. last thing? Yeah. Just, uh, just one last thought is that, and just to alert you, and I, I can't quite remember the details, but uh, my my recollection, and again, Larry, Larry, Larry was there, is that there is some kind of perhaps binding legal uh, situation where that has to do with whether people outside the district are funding. Do you know what I'm talking about at all? Is this ringing a bell? I'm not quite sure what you're. Well, I, I I felt like the the people outside the district could not be taxed unless they voted well, to be involved. But anyway, well, I mean, I'm sorry to be vague. Well, like in the current Mr. budget, we we budget we have a line item of a hundred thousand dollars from the general fund for for the so that goes into the district police like that. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and that, I mean, the voters will vote on it. I mean, if, if they don't like it mm -hmm. enough that they want to vote down the budget, I mean, they, they could. Yeah. That's their recourse. Yes. Um, but that's basic, but it was basically, otherwise it's, Sorry. you know, it's a budget, it's a for decision to create the budget the way we did. Yep. It's there, in the, but Emory was looking at some of that for us on the, <clears throat> on the taxing. Because it's there, it can be done two ways. They can contract with the rest of the town to provide the service also. Uh -huh. So there's two ways to get access to that money. It could just become part of the budget and it flows into their budget if we're able. If not, we contract to provide the service to the rest of the town. The problem is there's nobody else that can provide it. So if we're going to go through all this effort and we're going to do all this and we're going to use ARPA money to support some of this, the it needs to function. And we can't say to the rest of the town, sorry, 
but we have this department stood up here and people, but I can't cross that line to help you out, knowing the state police can't get to you and nobody else can. So we're trying to, we do know there's a nuance of which way you do it, but it's in the budget that way. Mm -hmm. So we have the ability to implement it whichever way we can. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, hang on, I got one more in the room first, Marty. Um, yeah, I, I guess I, I share the same question about the sort of the scale of the department, you know, for I believe it's what four officers plus an administrative person. Um, so I, I had sort of that same question. Um, I have a few sort of specific questions about the budget and the way that it's warned on the town meeting uh, warning for, you know, for FY24, because, you know, um, it says, you know, 700, it's 771,387 of which um, 271,900 shall be from non, excuse me, non-tax revenue. Mm -hmm. So, and part of that 271,900 is the transfer from the general fund. So how is that non-tax revenue? It's so, not police department. It's not the police district. Okay, so I thought you'd say that. Yep. <laughs> so my question is, so I live in the police district as well. So I'm going to pay my general fund taxes mm -hmm. and I'm going to pay my police district taxes. And part of my general fund taxes are going to go back. In, so I'm going to pay kind of double in a way, right? No, they're uh, I, I guess I guess I disagree with the characterization that a hundred thousand dollars is from non-tax no, revenue. No, you're you're right. With the the grand list for the for the police district is about a third of the size of the total grand list. So when we say we're a hundred thousand dollars coming from the general fund, the people in the police district will pay about on you know overall will pay about a third of that. Okay, yeah, but so, so 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 is so, so is the warning like inaccurate then? No, I mean that seems no, kind it's of... not inaccurate. It's just that you're you're paying it through your townwide municipal bill, not the police district bill. I think that the question is a little bit different than that, Larry. Um, Still taxes. That, that part of my question, general fund taxes. Yep, but sure. that question is the one that comes on that separate paper to only the police district, mm -hmm. and it's about the tax being assessed only to the police district okay so the tax being I, assessed to the police district will raise the 499 and the other revenue is not part of that 499 I understand. you'll see yes. it in your general fund budget which you also vote on i understand that and that comes from the general fund tax i, that gets I think that that is a subtlety that most people will not understand unless like the newspaper prints something about it or the select board does some outreach and i think it's a little bit misleading i'm not saying that is intentional, but I, it's a little misleading to say non-tax and then have it come from taxes. That's one kind of question I had about the budget. The 50,000 from the high utilization organization payments. Power users. That, users. that seems like very <laughs> spe speculative. <laughs> and then the 100,000 in ARPA funds, I presume that is just gonna be in FY24 and in future years, that 100,000 is gonna then come from the police district. If it, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah, assuming the right. police force keeps going, you know, next year it's going to be a hundred thousand higher at minimum to what the police district people are going to have to raise or approve. So, and mm -hmm. generally, I mean, I see these types of things going up in the future, right? Salaries will go up, mm -hmm. health insurance is going to go up, and that's the bulk of the what the costs are. Um, so I, I just really question, I guess a, a question I have for the board is, did you consider making it a town-wide item that's part of the general fund that everyone pays for? If you're, and that way it's <laughs> transparent. No, well, we talked about it, but we didn't go there. Um, what you're going to hear from the other side is you guys get all the service. Why are we paying for all your service? And we get that other side of it too. So, yeah. And the taxing authority isn't there for the rest of the town. I the just, yeah. I mean, it just seems for a town our size to have almost a sixth of our town budget going to a 
police department seems out of scale with what I mean, I, you, you cited a couple of things. I, I would be interested to know about the data behind, you know, what is the police department actually doing? What are the calls? And how much is it, how much are four full-time officers really needed? I, I don't, because I, and, you know, just one last thing I would say is, I feel like, you know, this meeting is the first time that this has really been discussed in kind of an open way, like, I don't know how people around town, you know, feel about this and in the district. But anyway, I think there could, there needs to be more information out there about sort of why this decision gets made. Um, well, and, we, may, and maybe people will buy into it and maybe they won't. And I, I agree with you. It needs to get out there and more information. But just understand, like, you're talking... We were a lot of this conversation was about contracts, about move, like what do we do, how do we do it. Mm -hmm. It was a lot of stuff that wasn't able to go out to the public because we were also balancing the, you know, is the sheriff, the new sheriff elect mm -hmm. who wouldn't work with us or, or talk with us. Right. What's he planning? Is he does he suddenly have this posse that's going to ride in and populate all his positions to be able to do the service? There were so many unknowns. And we're sitting here planning multiple scenarios, mm -hmm. waiting, and actually the resignation letter only just came through. So it's... I guess, yeah, one last... It wasn't thing. a good scenario for us I, either. Yeah, I appreciate that, that you were in kind of a tough... And with the timing of getting the town meeting warning done. And um, yeah. is there any, like, repercussions for the sheriff breaking the contract? He's required to give a 30 days notice. Yeah. Operated a day and a half with nobody, no notice, no nothing, and then sent us a letter. I mean, what are we going to go after? Yeah. <laughs> like, I know it's a tough one. Yeah. There's and, and I, sorry, can you yeah, go ahead. I was just going to say that that we we did feel like we needed to act pretty quickly, and even with our kind of rapid action, um, it's still going to be a while before we have any you know police services again in town and. Um, and so I think we, you know, we, we did what we thought we could do under, you know, under the time constraints. And um, and I, I'm viewing this as as really the beginning of the conversation of, you know, of what police services look like here in Randolph and who pays for it. I don't see why what we have, you know, right now needs to be what we do forever going into the future. Um, I would like to see some adjustments made in the future, and, and part of that will depend upon. You know what our what our experience is over the next several months as we start to then construct, you know, and plan for the following fiscal year. It's very hard to scale back, as a, as opposed to scale up. So well, if, you have, of, if you start with five municipal employees out of the gate, it's very well, hard to be like, oh, actually, we just need to. Well, we're probably not going to go down because right. we found that with with three officers from Orange County. That that provided a good level of service, um, and the reason why. And please tell me if I'm not getting this straight, but because I have the same question about why don't we just have three officers? Or maybe Scott could actually answer this question probably better than than I. But I'll give it a shot just for practice. <laughs> um, that um, with the, that Orange County Sheriff with with providing us three officers. Um, was able to keep three officers on duty, you know, every week, year round. Um, but because we don't have other staff to draw upon, <clears throat> if we have three officers on duty all the time, um, if one of them is sick, if one of them is on vacation, if one of them is, you know, out for whatever reason, or if we need an, another officer, if there's some sort of an event or something like that, we have no one um, to draw upon. So if is we want to maintain... No. They Except our state police is 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 down um, quite a bit. We can't. They've told us we can't rely on them basically for anything. Um, <clears throat> so, so the idea is that four officers basically gives us essentially the coverage which we've been used to having. Um, and then the administrative person is that was also a service which was provided by the sheriff's department. And um, and if we and to run the police department, we need that person. And um, and I don't know if if this has been um, 
figured out in any detail, but I know there was, a, we've also talked about the possibility of that person being able to fill some other holes in our overall administrative deficit um, in the town office. So that person would not necessarily be a full-time, <laughs> just police department um, person. So, so those wages would, wages when they were working on other stuff wouldn't be charged to the police budget. So that's some of the background in terms of you know how we came to the decision we made, and um, I'm I'm I mean I I'm open to you know looking at staffing levels in the future, um, but given what we, we knew when we were making these decisions, that's that's what went into that. Um, and in terms of what the size of the police district is and who and who pays, I'd also like to see that conversation um, continue into into the future. Okay. Hello. Yeah, go ahead, Mark. Oh, thank you. Um, I uh, I had a couple of comments. Um, first, I appreciate the direction that the select board is taking here. I know you're in a difficult position, and I think what you're doing is right. And I don't think you have to solve every problem uh, in the in the next two days, but you do have you do need to get a police force in place in the next few days. And um, I think you're you're headed in the right direction. Um, there's some lessons to be drawn from this, I think. One is that uh, it's never a good idea to turn over police services in a community to an elected public official who's elected by people outside of that community. And and it should be obvious why that's a problem now. Um, but secondly, when it comes to the extent of the need, I think we need to take a look. I, I've, I've looked at the contract uh, pretty closely between the Orange County Sheriff's Department and the town. And um, it looks to me like the 120 hours is for, I would, I would almost describe it as casual police services. If there's any documented incident, and I, the term is not defined in the contract, that's billed on top. And is a documented in incident? Is, what is that? And how many of them have there been? And how much have we actually paid uh, for these uh, Sheriff's Department police services? And what does that tell us about what we actually need in terms of police protection? Um, I, I don't trust the argument that that we we're a safe community who doesn't need any protection we may be a safe community but we need protection and i strongly support the direction that the select board is going in i know you may want to make corrections down the line i'm not worried about you over budgeting right now um and as far as far as asking people outside of the police district to pay you know <laughs> free riders are all the same they don't want to pay for anything for a service they don't need until they need it, and then they don't want to pay for it. So we, we need to take into account the fact that the people who are in the police district are carrying the burden, and they're carrying the burden for some of the people outside the police district because policemen respond to calls from outside the district. So let's get this straight. You're going right in the right direction. I appreciate the direction you're going in. Uh, I encourage you to continue it. Thank you. Thanks, Marty. I think the other thing we learned is a lot of our policing services are actually being delivered in Braintree, so we may need to have the conversation with them, too. <laughs> Do we know, um, as he, maybe this is going to flow from the conversation that has been scheduled, but do we know, or Scott, can maybe you estimate um, the degree to which the, the school and Gifford being within the district um, as a proportion of your overall activity? Uh, we ran the numbers, and I apologize, I do not have those in front of me in regards to what we did in 2021 and 2022. They averaged between uh, 60 and 70 calls, I believe, for Gifford alone. The school was more, I apologize, I do not have that mm -hmm. uh, number for it, but that ranged from uh, medical emergencies, mental health, um, or simple traffic control for Veggie Van Gogh or uh, Last Mile mm -hmm. or things of that nature as yeah. well. School, 
um, anything from any um, reading books to kids, uh, lead programs, or unruly kids, uh, incidences that happen, fights, uh, or anything else that kind of transpired within those those areas we, we handle. This is a, it, well, we've talked about it and it's a concern of mine that we have a major regional medical facility within the context, of course, of a rural environment. And, and we have a high school that serves three communities and uh, 1,500 people in the village are paying the freight for all of that. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's, you know, I understand it's time to make things a little bit more equitable. Have the conversation much more openly than the. Hmm? My understanding is the school is ready to come to the table and have that conversation. Mm -hmm. Gifford's willing to have the conversation about what mm -hmm. they would like from us. For I mean, the reality of the school mm -hmm. is that if they transfer the cost to the school budget, we're, we're still going to be paying. So, so, will, so will the other towns. <laughs> but so will, so will the other towns. Well, those, those, are certainly, those are certainly legitimate issues without question. But would anybody in Randolph not want the high school or the hospital to be here just because we have oh, like, police all. services? I don't think so. No, I, I, and that's I, not what I'm suggesting, Marty. It's I know, I, I know it isn't what you're suggesting. I'm just saying that the argument that they're here and they're they're a burden to the the uh, taxpayer who has to pay for police services, it's not a really strong argument from my point of view because we want those services here. We don't want mm -hmm. them somewhere else. Mm -hmm. But we do. Um, every time they come in for an application for development, we have to sign off that we have the capacity to provide those services, and I think it's questionable whether we could sign that today for anybody. I think you're right, mm -hmm. and that's why I'm glad you're going the direction you're going. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a tough one, no doubt about it. Any more questions or comments? On this topic, there's nothing for us to act on, but we will be setting a special meeting to go over all the policies and try to get them reviewed and adopted. Mm -hmm. um, so the policies on the books are for the town of Randolph Police Department when it went non-exist. So they haven't been updated. They aren't the current ones. They're not the latest and greatest language and whatever. Um, so Scott has been working on downloading all the ones that we're supposed to have and changing them over to Randolph, and they have to be adopted before we bring on to result and then put them into play. So we'll hopefully get through those, get them read through and ready, get them out to everybody. There's a lot of them, unfortunately. Um, and then maybe we can set up a time to go through them. We might be able to go back and forth with questions or whatever to try to iron them out better before we meet. All right, any more on this one? Any questions, comments? All right, well, thanks everybody. We we'll move the agenda forward to discussing with Mary Victor, the Economic Development Council. Mary is online. Yep, hi, how are, how are you all doing? <laughs> Um, so um, the reason I'm coming to the select board is that the Economic Development Council has not met for, um, it's going to be about a year. Uh, we had done a lot of things during COVID, but um, initiatives have somewhat fizzled. So I'm just going to go back with a little bit of history. I don't know all of the history of the Economic Development Council. Um, however, I know that I was involved with the R3 initiatives in which we had brought to uh, the town to hire a economic, a, an economic development director. So that happened, and of course, Josh was our first, and then Josh left, and um, Mark uh, Rosalbo is now the economic director. After the hiring, um, it was unclear of the roles between the Economic Development Director and the Economic Development Council. So what I had done was there, there was no clear direction of who's gonna do what. So I did some research and found that there are no towns within Vermont that have an economic director as well as a council. It's either one or the other, but not both. So throughout the summer, 
and fall, I've had um, discussions with Mark to how we can restructure the Economic Council. And um, the takeaway was for me to look at the bylaws. And so I had a small core group where we had a discussion in November. And what we found is one, the bylaws are outdated. I think the last time they were updated was in 2015. And then it did not align with the September 2019 uh, town plan. So among the, the small core group, we discussed and the decision was to disband the Economic Development Council. And I had um, a conversation with both Mark and Trevor. And the goal was to have that um, be under the Economic Development Director where he would dovetail efforts and initiatives with the local nonprofits, as well as the Green Mountain Economic Development Corp. And then out of that, whatever initiatives, um, it would be up to the economic development director to create a, uh, like an economic development advisory uh, group so that it could consist of businesses and community outreach and that there could be core items and tasks um, to go forward and to be more productive than what we have been having. In addition, when I've held meetings, I've never been able to have a quorum, so business could never be conducted. So that is why I'm coming before the select board for consideration to disband the Economic Development Council and move it under the direction of the Economic Development Director, who then would then develop an advisory group um, for different initiatives. And thank you, and if, I'll answer any questions that you may have. Questions on that? I, I can I can confirm what Mary just said because of the writing I've done on economic development issues for the freelance writing I've done that I I can think of no other town in the state that has both functions um, and those towns that do have economic development directors by and large do have advisory bodies of some to some extent so. The model that Mary is suggesting is, is consistent with other communities. Is that advisory group put together by Mark or by the board? I believe it's typically it's put together team. by the economic development director. Right. But I would presume in consultation with the town council or select board, whatever the governing body is. Um, and so is this advisory council? I'm not sure if I, what I, if I heard correctly that's. Is it like a, a sort of a permanent body or is it put together on an ad hoc kind of basis depending upon the kind of thing that I don't know, Mary, is, what you, is going on? I, the the um, conversation I had with Mark would be more on an ad hoc. So for example, whoever he is having discussions with within town with different you know downtown events or whatnot to develop an ad hoc group to mm -hmm. just target on that. Very similar to what the select board has done with the ARPA council committee. You know, you've got the set of um, uh, things that you wanna get accomplished. And then after a period of time, that group dissolves and then, but you keep bringing folks in. And that way I believe you keep it fresh because you will bring in different uh, folks that have um, different interests versus having the same people in the room and it gets old and nothing seems to move. And I, I thought, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I thought at some point towards the middle of January, because I wanted to present this in January, um, that I think Trini had reached out to Mark to put some kind of a document together, um, but he has not been in touch with me. And um, I only spoken briefly with Trevor, but I had been in communication with the two of them uh, throughout the summer and uh, as mm, the end of November. And after the uh, and after Thanksgiving, I have not heard from Mark or, or Trevor regarding this initiative. What I asked him for was to lay out how he saw it working. Okay, thank you. 
that was the piece that I'm that's missing. Like, what's the how would you do the charge for that group? How would you, you know, select? How would you that type of thing? But I haven't heard anything more from him either. I mean, Trina, what I had on. done is I had a very high level where I had um where the economic direct you know like a organization chart where you have the economic development director as the key person and then the what I call a dotted line to the different uh, nonprofits in town, such as the RACDC um, and Green Mountain Economic Development Corp and so forth. And then break down, bring folks in um, from the community and the local businesses to participate in, again, whatever initiative. Yeah. To the question of oversight um, of this group and, and how the appointments get made, um, it's sort of similar in some respects from what I'm hearing Mary say to our current arts and culture committee, which really functions as an advisory committee. It doesn't really put forward any policies for our approval. Um, yeah. I think, though, that some of what this seems to be shaping up as is when we've had different companies looking at Randolph, we've mm -hmm. grabbed Green Mountain Economic Development, we've grabbed um, some banks, we've had Vita, we've had mm -hmm. different people that we've pulled in to that conversation right. to try to see what makes that work. And I'm not sure that we need to have the select board approve every, it's, it's like a working group. Right. That he would pull together yeah, yeah. to help with whatever's taking place, which is part of his job duties. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so I don't know that we have to go through and make a formal appointment and create a committee and do mm -hmm. all that because I don't think it's a standing set of people. I think it's right. It's know, situation that's dependent on right. situation. If it's very if it's very much project oriented. Yeah, and it's gonna change. It's I part would, of his I, job. I yeah, think I the be question before us is just disbanding the the formal committee mm -hmm. and the charge to it, which I'm fine with. Yeah, seems like it's time has come. Would, would it be appropriate to, to, <laughs> to take action on this recommendation at the reorg meeting next month? Because we can it. take action on it tonight so we don't That's go true. out and recruit people yeah. for it next month. So That's then true. say, oh, guess what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't take it personally, but we're not putting anybody on this. We're getting rid of it. No, it's for motion. Thanks for getting I am. I'll, I'll move that we uh, disband the Economic Development Council. And I will second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Thanks, Mary. Thank you, folks. Uh, I'll send what I will do is I will send um, an email to the council members there that are on there and just then saying that the council has been disbanded and I'll try to coordinate that with Mark so that it's a common message to the folks that um, I think their term would be up in March anyway so um, it's just more as a courtesy that the council is no longer going to function the way it used to does that sound fair with you folks. Yeah, I think Mark should word something so they know we appreciate the effort they put yeah. in and, yeah. and the time some of them have been there and whatnot. Yep. All right. Um, I will reach out to Mark on that then. Sounds good. Thanks. That's right. I never see you on the payroll that we approved, so I know you're right here with the rest of us. <laughs> Thank you. Have a wonderful evening and a good weekend. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. So we have two grant applications up next. Um, the Kimball Library one, which I think was for Paul Brune, and um, the Recreation Department applying for one through Gifford. If we have no questions on those, we could move them both at the same time. I don't have any questions. <laughs> I'll move the approval of both the uh, Kimball Library and Recreation Department grants. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Cheers. Consider committee appointments. I think we had one. Yeah. 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 Yeah
one for the energy committee when we lost, if I'm not mistaken. Wendy submitted a note. It should be in oh, right. Too. There it is. Yeah. yeah. And that's for the energy committee. And then the other um, committee appointment is for the water wastewater committee. Yeah, Justin. Which um, Justin West has um, requested to join as a result of. She's a justice of the peace and was on, was on the board mm -hmm. of treatment and has seen firsthand some of the troubles that we've had and, um, help, right? and offered to help us come up with policies so we can head off some of those issues. So mm -hmm. I suggested that she join the group. She said that she would. So without her, her coming forward, um, I would still like to. Uh, uh, her, uh, grab her while she's willing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> she changes her mind. Of course, she changes her mind. Don't let her change your mind. Because I, I think that's going to be really important work for us to do. Yep. Especially if we go to the one spot. Get rid of the leaders. It's a little more complicated. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions on any of those appointments? No, I'll move both of the appointments. I'll second. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Other business. We do not have any other business. And we do not have a manager tonight to give us the manager's report. <laughs> okay, we're Trevor. <laughs> Hot garbage. So those we, <laughs> we need a two part motion. One to find that we need to go into executive session, and the other one to go into executive session. Move that uh, we go into executive. Uh, I will move that we go into executive session for the purpose. Find that we need to find. Yes. Let me help you. <laughs> I'm doing better about all this. <laughs> I used to say this Trevor always twice a month, but it's been a couple of years, so here we go. The boards, I move that we go into executive session to consider, uh, let's, I move we consider a motion to find an executive session is necessary and prudent, and that premature general public disclosure would place the town at a disadvantage. Okay. Shakespearean. Can I have a five so I can record? And then I'll, I'll move that we actually go into a second session yeah. based upon Tom's findings. Case. I will second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye.